Hello everyone, I'm Marisa Castelló and in this video I'm going to explain the fundamentals of momentum transport through Newton's law of viscosity. Also, we'll see how to proceed when there is no laminar flow in the fluids and we must apply empirical models. Therefore, the objectives of these presentations are the following. Establish how to differentiate the flow of fluids by means of Reynolds number. Identify the parameters of Newton's law of viscosity and finally classify fluids in Newtonians or non-Newtonians and in this last case we'll learn what is the meaning of rheopectic and thesotropic fluids. Let's start by looking at the differences in the behavior of a fluid that moves with laminar or with turbulent flow. In the first case particles follow a smooth path called a streamline. A turbulent flow is characterized by a disorderly and three-dimensional movement. In both cases, red lines represent the speed profile, resulting in a more uniform velocity distribution in turbulent flow than in laminar case. How can we know if a fluid moves in a laminar or turbulent way? Well, we can know it through the Reynolds number. This number is a dimensionless parameter and it represents the ratio of inertial forces to viscous forces in a fluid. When fluid travels within a pipe, we'll use Reynolds number for pipe flow uh, with this equation, where D is the diameter of the pipe, V is the average velocity of the fluid, rho is its density and u is its viscosity. Thus, a Reynolds number lower than 2100 refers to laminar flow. A transitory regime is when the value is between 2100 and 4000, and the flow is turbulent when the Reynolds number is greater than 4000. Fluids can also be found inside tanks in which they are steered. In these cases, to know if the flow is laminar or turbulent, we'll use the Reynolds number of the impeller with this subscript I and with this formula. Now, Ni is the velocity of the steerer and the flow will be laminar when this value is lower than 10 or turbulent when the Reynolds number of the impeller is higher than 10,000. As we have seen in the Reynolds number formula, viscosity plays a determinant role in the rheological behavior of fluids. That term, rheological, comes from rheology, which is the part of the physics that study viscosity, plasticity, elasticity, and spillage of matter. In other words, it reports the mechanical response of the fluids. Of these properties, viscosity can be defined as the resistance that a fluid shows to movement and depends on the presence of cells, air, temperature, or pressure. It is very important to know the viscosity of fluids because its value affects the stages of pumping, mixing, transfer of matter and heat, among other things. In this example, I show you the difference in pumping the same fluid that has been submitted to a steering or not. As you can see, the steering favors the transport of the fluid, increasing the workflow with the repercussion that this entails on the efficiency of the process. Another example can be found in the clinical field. Specifically, it is known that uh, increasing hematocrit greatly increases the viscosity of the blood. The hematocrit is defined by the amount of the volume of the blood occupied by the red cells, with respect to the, that occupied by the whole blood. Its relationship with viscosity can inform us if its value is in the optimal range for each person. To achieve Newton's law of viscosity, the following experiment was performed. Two plates were placed in parallel, separated by a certain distance delta. Water was introduced 
between them and one of the placed was moved in the diagram, the one below, seeing that the speed with which the water layers were moving decreased linearly as they were approaching the fixed plate. This speed variation is represented by a straight line that will have more or less inclination slope depending on the applied shear stress. Thus, the linear relationship is established between the shear stress and the velocity gradient, the proportionality constant being the viscosity. Viscosity can be expressed in two ways, dynamic and kinematic viscosity depending on whether or not it is related to the density of the fluid. Thus, Newton's law of viscosity represents momentum transfer in fluids moving with laminar flow. The negative sign indicates that the motion is transferred from the regions of higher speed to those of lower speed, and the velocity gradient determines the value of the momentum flow being the driving force of this transfer. In addition, depending on the type of fluid, the effect of temperature will increase the viscosity of gases or reduce the viscosity of liquids. Depending on whether or not they follow Newton's law of viscosity, fluids will be classified into Newtonian or non-Newtonian fluids. In the former, the viscosity will take a defined and constant value for each pressure and condition, while in the later, the viscosity will be a function of the speed gradient and will speak of apparent viscosity. In the following rheogram, in which the shear stress is represented versus the um, shear rate, the different types of fluids are presented. In the straight line from the origin, the behavior of Newtonian fluids is shown. In the curves, starting from the vertex of the graph, the pseudoplastic and dilatant fluids are a zone. These are non-Newtonian fluids that follow the power law, in which instead of talking of viscosity, we'll talk about consistency index. And the speed gradient power term will be the flow behavior index. If that value is higher than one, we'll say that the fluid is dilatant. And if it is lower than one, the fluid will be pseudoplastic. In dilatant fluids, the apparent viscosity increases with the velocity gradient. And in pseudoplastic fluids, the opposite happens. On the other hand, we can find the Bingham plastics that once they have over exceed a certain threshold shear stress, flow as if they were Newtonians. And in that case, we will use this equation. In addition, some plastics are other kind of non-Newtonian fluids in which once a threshold stress is overpassed, they'll behave like pseudoplastic. In this table, I show you some example of the different fluids. A case of dilatant fluid is the mixture of water and corn flow that offers a very high viscosity when it is submitted to a high strain rate, behaving like a solid, whereas at low strain rate, it behaves as a liquid. So if a bike goes very fast on it, it wouldn't sink. But if it goes very slowly, it sinks. Another example is the development of a liquid material that behaves as a dilatant and that has been designed to improve the protection of bulletproof vest. In comparison with the traditional vest, this new design increases the movement capacity of the person who used it. Lastly, depending on how time affects to Newtonian fluids, they can be classified in rheopectic when viscosity increases with time, such as in paints or plasters, and in thick when viscosity decreases with time. 
which are the most usual fruits in nature. In summary, we have seen what Newtonian's low viscosity models. And besides, fluids have been classified in Newtonian and non-Newtonian fluids. We have also seen that adjusting the rheological characteristics of fluids can help in the design of new materials with several technical functions. To finish, I leave you these references. Thank you for your attention.